Well, hey there, I'm Jay. Welcome to my booth. Audio interfaces, they are the last bit in your signal chain before everything goes into your computer and you do with it what you will. So, as a voiceover artist, what are the things we're looking for in an audio interface? What are the best audio interfaces for us to use and why? Uh, Let's dive into it. First up, what is an audio interface? If you don't know, an audio interface does a number of things. It provides power to our microphone uh, via phantom power. It converts the signal from the microphone to the computer, aka electrical from the microphone to a digital to your computer. And it also gives you a fancy schmancy headphone preamp so you can plug fancy headphones into your audio interface. And then the last thing it does is it allows you to adjust the gain or sensitivity of your microphone so you can make it super sensitive if you're doing really quiet stuff and ASMR type things. Or if you're yelling, you can turn your microphone down uh, to get the proper signal. That's what an audio interface does in a nutshell. Uh, So what are we looking for in an audio interface? Well, Luckily for voiceover artists, most entry-level audio interfaces, and by entry-level, I mean most priced between $150 to $300, are going to do you just fine. Not only that, they can take you well into your career to great success. Uh, Many of my colleagues and friends still use this exact interface, which is the Focusrite Scarlet Solo, which I think is $150 or less uh, at the time of this video for their work and they make good livings in voiceover so you don't need anything fancy as far as a vo- as far as an audio interface is concerned in order to do this if you're looking to upgrade or um, move further into your career and just make your sound incrementally better as you move into mid-range and more expensive interfaces i'm talking like uh, $800 up to a thousand plus dollars. Those ones, uh, the components inside the interfaces just get better. And what I mean by that is the microphone preamps become higher quality. The converter, the thing that changes the signal from electrical to digital becomes more high quality. The audio uh, or the headphone preamps become better. The clocks inside, everything just gets tighter and cleaner, meaning your signal chain, the audio signal that you're recording is just that much more professional, which for 90% of folks out there isn't going to be an issue. This $125, $150 thing will take you the distance, no sweat. Uh, And then moving into the more professionals, it just makes your signal cleaner, uh, where if you're using super uh, niche microphones that need that, it helps. Um, And then in addition to that, in the higher level interfaces, sometimes they'll offer what's called DSP or digital signal processing, meaning you can add little modules that can change the sound. And what I mean by that are generally EQ or equalizers, compressors, uh, preamps, saturation, even down to like reverb or guitar amp emulators, like tons of crazy stuff that you can put into your signal chain. And for a lot of voiceover artists, that's a lot of fun to play around with and can be helpful in your recording, particularly if you're doing live recordings. Um, You can think about it in this respect because it's essentially the same thing. This here is a channel strip. It is a, oh God, I don't, I've got everything mirrored. This is the DBX286S channel strip, and it allows you to apply compression, equalization, uh, output gain, the whole kit and caboodle. And what a DSP processor is, is essentially fitting one of these or modules of this type of thing into your audio interface, which can be really, really helpful at times. Um, For me personally, my take on DSP processing is I prefer to record my audio raw, meaning 
no additional processing outside of what's going into the microphone and through the interface, and then do all of my adjustments if I need to after the fact. And the reason why I prefer that method is it, I ensure that I have clean, raw, unadulterated audio that I can send to my clients if they request it. Uh, in, instead of having all of my own processing choices baked in, because I don't know what they want to do with the audio. And if I've made a bunch of tweaks to it, um, they might not want that. And so I want to provide clean, raw audio instead of processing everything up front. Um, occasionally, in full disclosure, I will use minimal compression just to make my life easier. For example, I'm using a compressor right now, so if I get loud, I don't clip the uh, audio at an, in any way. Uh, so that's my take on DSP processing, and uh, if you're interested in that, I think it's a cool thing to explore. Um, so what are things that we are looking for in an audio interface outside of just does it do the job? Because <laughs> uh, if I'm being honest, most in entry level interfaces like this Focusrite Scarlett Solo are going to do the job just fine. Um, one thing to consider is, is the interface bus powered or does it require additional power supply? Some higher level interfaces need to be plugged into an outlet in order to function in addition to your computer. Whereas a lot of audio interfaces can just be plugged into your computer and that's fine. And for me, the benefit of bus power, meaning it's just plugged into your computer and is powered off of that, is for example, if I go traveling and I need to take my kit with me, I can go into a closet with my laptop, my interface, and my microphone, and I don't have to worry about uh, stringing power cables into the closet with me. I can just have my laptop running the show. Um, additionally, here in my home studio, running power into my vocal booth, for example, is challenging and then can introduce potentially interference into the cables and cable management that I've got going on. So if I were to use an interface that needed additional power supply, that would be a consideration for me, knowing how I'm going to route that power to my booth. Um, so those are just a couple of things to consider. But by and large, if it's an audio interface, it's going to get the job done just fine. And then there are a couple little nuances within it. So just to wrap things up with a neat little bow, if you're looking for an audio interface, what are the best ways to go? I think if you're starting out, again, most audio interfaces will get the job done if you're spending between 100, 125 bucks up to about $300 because you don't need much as a voiceover artist. You got one microphone, you just need one little knob for that and a headphone jack and that's it. Uh, this Focusrite Scarlet Solo was a great place for me to start and start learning the ropes, but there are lots of other great ones out there. Presonus, Audient, um, they offer great options as well. Uh, the next thing, this is at least what I did. I bought this DBX signal uh, channel strip processor, which is, I just plugged it into my audio interface and it allowed me to sort of introduce my own DSP processing into my Focusrite Scarlet Solo, which was a great way for me to incrementally upgrade and just learn more about what I was doing. All told, the interface and this uh, channel strip cost, I think, like 300, 350 bucks. So it's not inordinately expensive. Then when I wanted cleaner preamps, I wanted a cleaner signal chain all around, I moved into my uh, Universal Audio Apollo Solo, which... In all honesty, I have mixed feelings about because I really enjoy the uh, sound it provides. But at the same time, unfortunately, I upgraded to one of the new M1 Max, which has its own really great benefits. But it also, uh, as that M1 system upgraded, the uh, software from Universal Audio 
had difficulty catching up, as did many developers. And uh, it's just caused a little bit of a headache here and there in terms of using their software with my M1 Mac, but uh, I still use it because the audio quality is great. In addition to that, uh, the emulation software, the different plugins or channel strips that Universal Audio provides are really, really something else. They're great. Um, unfortunately, you need to use or continue to use or at least have attached to your computer a Universal Audio Apollo or a Universal Audio channel strip or uh, interface in order to continue using any plugins that you buy from them, um, which is a great way to lock in your clients. Uh, but it's unfortunate because when I go on the road, I take this guy with me because it's just smaller and more portable and I can't use any of my uh, plugins that I bought from Universal Audio. So that's just a little thing to consider if you're thinking about it. And that's all for this one. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions about this or anything else voiceover related, please drop me a line down below or reach out on my website and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until the next one, be well. Toodles. <laughs>